Hi there, welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. My name is AJ Mahari. I've been online for 29 years. I've been working with clients who have any kind of relationship, different relationship types, or more than one relationship type with people with borderline personality disorder, and also with people with narcissistic personality disorder. And if you're the adult child of a borderline or a narcissist, as well as perhaps you've been in a relationship with a borderline or narcissist, I'm out here to work with you if I resonate with you. And in this video, I'd like to address a comment that was left on a video I did, Borderlines Don't Value You in Dating or Relationships. This idea, as I've talked about many times, that when you get into a relationship, it's true with a narcissist as well to a degree. There's still going to be this object other, you know, narcissists see you as objects, borderline see you as objects, not for the same motivating reasons. They're not exactly the same, but there is some overlap between BPD and NPD. Not the same for every individual who has BPD or NPD or comorbidity both or an overlap. But people with BPD predominantly, let's just go with that, because with narcissists, it's a bit more of a complicated explanation, which I could give, but it'll muddy the waters here. So I've always been talking about how people with BPD unconsciously seek identity through you, if you're their partner, or when you are, or even if you're the ex, they hoover you back, all of that stuff. They're seeking identity. They have part their lack of object constancy onto you so that they can try to feel, quote, safe with you. But it doesn't work because they don't feel safe and they don't know how to trust other, meaning you. And that you, as a partner of a person with borderline personality disorder, will become, the uh, to them, unconsciously, the object of their parent representation. That means... In idealization, you're, you're likely being experienced as by the borderline as the object of their good parent representation perhaps not had in childhood, depending on what a certain anyone with BPD's parents or parent was really like, or a parent was really like. And then there's this, in devaluation, you become the object of their parent representation of the wounding parent. So, and it doesn't matter if you're a man and you're with a borderline woman and she has big mother wounds, you will become to her in an unconscious way experienced to be bad mom, even if you're a man, because gender doesn't, it doesn't hold in this emotional kind of like dynamic of arena of brokenness and things that don't work uh, for people with BPD. So, when you become the object of their parent representation to them unconsciously, and many clients have said to me, well, that makes sense. People have commented on videos and said, that makes sense because I felt like a parent. I felt like a parent. She, because they expect everything from you. They don't know who they are. They don't know how to love. They don't love themselves. They don't have a container of self from which to relate or know the difference between self and other people with BPD at all. But yet you think to take, you know, like who they were in idealization. You think they've got any of that stuff to give to you? No, not really just for a very limited time. So they, and, and they don't do it on purpose. Most people with BPD, it's like they really want to be loved and they really need reparenting. And so this is how this dynamic builds. And a lot of people with codependency or the relationships with the borderline, narcissist, whatever, and you're not aware of what's happening. So this is a comment wherein, uh, like many people have misinterpreted what I actually mean at times, I wanted to address this. So the commenter on this topic um, of how you become like the parent, okay, so object of the representation of parent, but like the parent to them because people with BPD untreated until least significantly treated and or recovered will be still emotionally very young because of arrested emotional development. This is the heart of BPD. And yes, you know, you can read studies, you can hear people talk about people with BPD and well, this aspect of, you know, their amygdala or this aspect of the prefrontal cortex and did the, and they see this stuff in those M, what are they, fMRI studies. Well, they're just looking at trauma and how trauma impacts the brain, not how people with BPD were born. And there is neuroplasticity in any healing and recovery 
uh, modality for people with BPD if they will just seek treatment and stick with it. But of course, that's not going to save your relationship. You can't make them do that and you can't rescue them. And once you've been so hurt by somebody with BPD or NPD, the notion that maybe you can get therapy and they can go and get therapy and you can come back together in the future, that's just about your denial and your pain in the here and now. So this person misconstrued what I meant by you become like a parent, especially to bo- to a borderline, who is a very emotionally young child in an adult body who might have a real adult IQ, but lacking the emotional intelligence uh, of an adult, definitely. So the commenter said, so if they want to be parented, which they do need and want, but aren't often aware of, uh, nor is it anywhere near anything healthy in a relationship, let me underscore that. So if they want to be parented, would that mean that an older male with a younger BPD female may keep the BPD responses limited because there's a level of parent? I always wanted a level of parent I always wanted in the relationship, which calms them. No, absolutely not. Because in a moment, you could be good parent, right? Object other, good parent in an idealized way. And then split the devaluation for a reason you may or may not have a clue about, or the person with BPD doesn't even have a clue about. Something triggers them. They get emotionally dysregulated. Sometimes it's age aggression, not always. You become the parent again, but the bad parent object. This is where you get raged at and abused and and just there's nothing you can do to help. And so, no, there's, there's no calming somebody with BPD. People with BPD don't have a self. It's more than just these trite phrases of they lack a stable sense of self they lack self-identity. No, they lack a core. They rest in emotional development by or before the age of two, according to object relations theory. And I went through this, ladies and gentlemen, and I healed in 1990. And so I can give you the benefit of both sides from the inside out. And I've had two or three, can't remember now, cluster B relationships. And I am just like you, an average non-cluster B individual. So uh, I have a lot of insight with this. And then, no, I've never had NPD or anything like that, but I had the narcissistic parents, and I was. No, they're both gone now. I'm free. I was the adult child. I was the child and then the adult child of two narcissists. My mother, maybe some BPD, NPD, comorbidity, mainly a covert narcissist. My father was a malignant narcissist, psychopath, and many therapists told me along the way, you know, decades ago when I was in 15 years worth of therapy and healing and recovery from not even full-blown BPD, okay? I was labeled, never diagnosed, not assessed properly. Point is, though, I know what I went through that had to do with four core traits of BPD that had to do with that woundedness and that trauma response. And I did 15 years work in therapy to heal and recover that. So I offer my clients and in my videos and information I share, I offer you an insider out perspective. So I could explain to you about how the borderline does this, that, and the other thing, and then why specifically, and when they're aware and when they're not aware. Like I don't know for every single person, but when I work with clients and they give me all the nuance and the details, then I have a lot of feedback to give people. And I can answer, in, in sessions, I can answer any question you could ever fire at me well, actually about NPD, narcissists, or about borderlines. So, but this person is misunderstanding. So if, if you're a man who's like, say, 10 years older than a female with BPD, and you think that because they're looking for this parent unconsciously, that if you're that age, that somehow that's going to work better, it's going to calm them, you're going to be able to be that parent for them? No, 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 no. That doesn't work. That's what. That's not what I was talking about at all, and it is a misunderstanding of what I, you know, was saying. So just to be clear, whether you are a woman with a younger BPD male, whether you are a man with a younger BPD female, and you're trying to have a relationship, and you think because you're older than they are, 
that you're going to be able to be, well, you, everybody becomes object other parent representation in idealization because they're not even seeing you in the idealization phase, by the way. Though they mirror you and they make you feel great and like you're the greatest thing from, from since sliced bread or whatever. They're not even really seeing you. They're mirroring object other good parent never had in the beginning of idealization. So how heartbreaking might it be to find that out? Because, because it's not real that they see you or they hear you in idealization. Because if that were real, then how does it disappear so quickly after some micro splits and split to devaluation and a major split to devaluation where you might be ghosted and or discarded? And like, where did their quote love in the idealization phase where everything felt so great? Where did it all go? Well, it didn't go anywhere. It never was there. This is what so many people want to argue with me about online. Clients ask many, many questions about that because you're so sure they loved you. They never did. They never saw you. So that's when you're being idealized and you're seen as that parent that they never had, unconsciously by the borderline. And so if you want to seek out to actually try to play out this role of parent, the second that you're trying to be the kind parent, maybe the giving, loving parent they never had, which by the way, that's toxic and codependent because that's not what we get into adult relationships for, to be somebody's parent, unless you have a child and then you're the child's parent, right? Not your partner's parent. So remember that part. But the thing is, you could be trying to be really kind and really, like in another comment, somebody said, but I was tolerating her whatever. And I'm like, tolerating something isn't love. And there's something really unhealthy and toxic in just tolerating somebody or half of them because when they're, when it's good, it's the, the intermittent reinforcement thing again until it's awful and you split the devaluation and they're raging and you're like getting so hurt all over again. The roller coaster. It's just too much and not healthy. So if you're trying to be this parent to them and you try to be kind and giving, you just, you know, as a partner, but like in this parent role, if you think that maybe it would help you to be with a partner five, seven, ten years younger than yourself, no, it doesn't work that way. Because when you're kind and you're trying to give to them what maybe a parent never could, they don't trust you. They are defended. They are living through a false self and they will roar like a lion in rage or be silent and withdraw if they're discouraged, quiet, borderline. And they could be gone in a heartbeat because it's that tenuous for them. It's the engulfment. It's the getaway closer. It's the hate you, I don't, it's the, uh, I hate you, don't leave me. Or, you know, the, the love, hate. But there's no real healthy love in there. So if you're an older man with a younger woman, and when I say older, I mean, you could be like 35 and the female BPD could be 23. I'm not talking like you have to be 90 and, and she's like, whatever. No. So, so if you're five, seven, 10 years older than, than a person with BPD, whether you're a woman with a male with BPD or a male with a woman with BPD, because yes, there are just as many guys out there with BPD, by the way, just so you know, it's not just some woman's disorder, uh, but, but we talk mainly to men because because men don't want to listen when we're talking about borderline men and what women are going through. But women will listen to the other side, so to speak. I think that makes people think that all borderlines are women when that's not true. But no, what this, what this commenter proposes, so if they want to be parented, would that mean that an older male with a younger BPD fem female or an older female with a BPD, younger BPD male, um, may keep the BPD responses limited. No, not at all. Because they don't trust you. They don't have a container of self. What BPD really is and what it means, and it can be healed and recovered from, but a lot of people won't even go get therapy. What it really means in these relational dynamics is that they're not seeing you for who you are. And even if you're trying to play parent or represent parent, you're not going to be seen as, quote, the parent you're trying to be. You're going to be seen as, experienced as, more to the point, the probably really abusive parent, if not parents, that they really had. So they don't trust you. They don't trust themselves. It doesn't work. And, and how codependent is it? Very codependent. 
Why would anybody, with all due respect, comment, or if you relate to this, want to get into a relationship? Yeah, might be the hottest young woman you've ever met. Might be the most gorgeous, attractive man you as a woman have met. Or for lesbians, the borderline woman. And for uh, male, gay males, the borderline man and the attraction and bit of age difference. And this commenter thinks anything I've spoken about could mean you could pull off being the parent and that would make them less borderline or calm them down or soothe them or something. No, they don't have any of that emotional capacity unless until they really seek significant treatment and they have to want that treatment. And they have to do it for themselves, not for saving any relationship or for any codependent person who's like, you just got to change for me, babe. Just change for me because that's what you're all saying to these people with BPD. Well, like, and, and this commenter, well, okay, so if I have a younger female BPD partner, can I be an effective parent to her so that she can be a good partner for me and just won't be this borderline? The answer is objectively no, absolutely not. And that's very codependent thinking. And why do I put it that way? Well, because codependent thinking is is you putting the other person first, the whole idea of being the parent, making it work somehow, changing what borderlines go through and how they behave. No, that doesn't work because they don't trust you. And when they get into the dynamics in the relationship with you, where you're trying to love them and fix them and help them and rescue them and all of that stuff, give, 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 will they take, 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 take. Whether you are seen as good or bad object parent representation, let me put it to you this way. Here's an insider scoop from my past. Everybody that has BPD or some traits of BPD as I had four core traits of BPD and was labeled and not diagnosed properly, blah, 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 blah. But I can tell you from the inside out, went through this myself. I went through, um, I didn't have too many because I got into a relationship that was long-term, but I dated a few people prior to that. And I had no idea, but yeah, I mean, I didn't know me and I wanted someone else to help me with that, but I didn't know that. And so the key thing is that the nicer people were to me, unfortunately, you know, in my late teens and early 20s, the more that I would punish them, the more that I would need to get away from them because I had, and I can only speak from my own experience, right, in, on the other side, I had two parents that were so abusive, there was no love, trauma bonded to both of them as a child, and didn't experience so much that I would have to go to therapy and learn and unlearn the negative stuff and the impactingly, like just the stuff that like or it gave me, you know, left me with emotional arrested development to work through. So that, and then in therapy to find myself and to be reparented and to grow and to heal and to work through and break down the maladaptive coping mechanisms because they're adaptive in childhood. They're maladaptive when you get into early adulthood. So the bottom line is that I too was relating to everybody, even friends, like they were, quote, a parent figure to me, like they were my mother or my father or a needed mother or father when I was quite young, like, in, like you know, 17 to my mid-20s and I was in therapy from the age of 15 to 30, at which point I was healed and recovered and I've been living an averagely healthy, relatively normal life ever since for the last 36 years of my life consistently. So the point is though, there's no trust there. And I know it from the inside out that the people that were the kindest to me, sadly and tragically, were the ones that I would probably, I don't know who, like if some of them changed their phone number on me first, or if I kind of did some kind of discard that nobody was talking about back then, where you just kind of drift away and you don't go back because because the internal experience of that is the shame that builds and you feel like a piece of crap. So a lot of people with BPD have overcompensatory strategies wherein they, they make you f feel like, you know, it's it's all your fault and you're the, the crappy person and you're the one that's always wrong and they're always right and they got it together. That's just overcompensatory defensive strategy and it's really it's it's really uh, toxic and it's it's abuse of you because they're trying to get in the one-up position because they know 
They know somewhere, at least I did, when I was going through this in my late teens, early 20s, that you're, you know you're in the one down position. Because a lot of people, B people, never show you, but they feel like, or I would liken it to what I know I experienced, you feel like you're nothing but a, cre- a piece of crap on everybody's shoe. But then what do you do about that? Well, you don't go around all day thinking that or or whether you're aware you're thinking that or not. People with BPD uh, feel that way, but may not be aware of it and may not, you know, and then overcompensate for it by how haughty a lot of them out there really do look, H-A-U-G-H-T-Y. Maybe they're H-O-T too to people out there, but you got to be careful. So, no, there's no age difference. You could be the same age. You could be older. You could be two years younger than the person with BPD. You can't be an effective, what object other parent, them relating to you as object other parent in idealization or devaluation, really good parent, never had, really bad abusive parent, likely had, often, not always, that's not, that's just going to put you in the adversarial, you're the bad guy, you're all guilty, you're all wrong. Uh, it's just going to be, and then, and then maybe they come back and they get into a base mode after and, and then they give you just a tad of intermittent reinforcement. And then the circle goes around again. So there's no effective way, and it's a very codependent reality, I want you to hear that, that if you uh, can relate to this commenter and no offense against the commenter, that to think that you could be somehow a successful parent to a person with BPD, depending, it has nothing to do with ages, by the way, but, but that's what this person kind of misunderstood. No, you can't do it. And moreover, why would you want to do it? Because when you want an intimate partner, and maybe, depending what age you are, maybe you're looking for that intimate partner who's going to be, in the case of men, the mother of your children, or in the case of women, the father of your children. And you want to build, and they talk a good game because they want the future that they talk to you about, that they, they're in a fantasy land about because they don't know how to attain it, and they're not adult enough to even move toward it in any consistent way. They don't know themselves. And so if you want to play parent to them, even though you're going to be in this representative role that they may not have any understanding or conscious awareness of, it does not work. It still fuels the triggers and the emotional dysregulation and sometimes age regression and the rage and the blame and the, it's all your fault and you're never good enough. I mean, what I was going to say from my own experience was And I learned in my healing and recovery process and therapy way back in in my early 20s that when I realized I was relating to everybody as object other parent representation one way or the other, that that was like horrible to learn, number one, or that I was treating people like my parents, that whole dynamic that I was just reliving that out, reliving that out because that was all I knew at that point in time. And it's horrible but the thing is, once I realized that, wow, did I work hard to, you know, in therapy to, to really be helped with that. But in the meantime, what that meant was when I was relating to somebody or looking to them as object other parent representation without knowing it, when I was like, you know, in my late tw- uh, teens and 20s, it's always made for anger and rage and mistrust and the pushing away. Uh, It was nothing that ever brought anybody closer to me for me because I didn't have the ability then to be close to anyone, right? Didn't understand that. And and most people with BPD, 87% of them, have had a lot of trauma in childhood in various degrees and there's a lot of intergenerational trauma. So if you're... When you're in a relationship with an untreated or not well enough treated person with BPD, they're going to be in this dynamic unconsciously of the repetition compulsion cycles of relating to you like mom or dad and usually bad mom or dad after the idealization phase, you know, crashes with a major devaluation and these cycles repeat in these relationships. But you're only going to get, you know, intermittent reinforcement little aspects 
and it's going to fool you because you want it to. And you're going to be like, see, it's going to be okay. And then boom, it's not okay again. No, you can't parent them. It's another aspect of you can't rescue them. You can't fix them. You can't change them. They don't trust. They don't have a self. And maybe it's really hard to understand what that means. I know what it was like when I was living through the reality of not having a self. It's weird because you don't know that. But there's no consistency from relating to one person to the next. There's no congruence, though I didn't realize that when I was in my late teens or early 20s. And where did that come from in my childhood? What did I learn? Why did that happen? Because I had two parents. I was just a scapegoat. And I was just their emotional regulator garbage pail. So every time they got upset about anything, which was often, I never knew what was going on. I could be in my room minding my own business. Next thing you know, a parent, either one of my mother or my father would crash in my room and something would be all my fault. Like my brother broke a glass in the kitchen and somehow that was my fault because I was in my room minding my own business. It makes you crazy. And, and it takes away people with BP's ability to continue to develop through the early stages of childhood development. Therefore, they remain very childlike emotionally as they get a year older and as they get more intelligent, often as they get older, get education, if they're functional. And the high-functioning, discouraged, quiet borderline is the hardest one to get diagnosed these days and is the hardest to treat more so than the petulant acting out, maybe not so, su so successful at holding jobs borderline. But then, of course, there's substance abuse and other factors and comorbidities. And so each person with BPD has to be seen as an individual. But no, you're not going to be a successful parent to the partner that you want to have an adult relationship with. So think about that because that's a codependent way to go about that. That's you putting yourself in a position like where the commenter is almost intimating that they would then consciously maybe go look for, not necessarily a borderline again, but a younger female who may have BPD. And then they think they would be more successful at being able to be their parent. But where does, that doesn't belong anywhere in an adult, significant other romantic relationship, does it? Just think about that. So it's doomed from the beginning just on account of that. But to what this commenter said, no. And what, I, what I'm talking about is key here for you to understand because they will not be seeing you and they will not be relating to who you are. And that's why they can get gone so fast because they're not loving you. They, they have disorganized attachment, so they don't know how to attach Never mind, oh, they're anxious, avoiding attachment, and I'm this attachment, and that's not even the half of the core issues. So you need to take care of yourself, and, 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 and if you relate to this commenter or to this commenter, with all due respect, if you are willing to sacrifice and think that you can be the parent of a borderline to keep that relationship going while at the same time they're your love interest and, and you're sexually attracted and you want that part of the relationship, that's just a toxic recipe nightmare uh, for even the hypervigilant, not the hypervigilant, the hypersexual borderline, which could be some males, hard to say that about males, but borderline woman, the hypersexual borderline woman, that can be really great in the beginning, but for more people than not, that really dries up at some point too because there's no consistency. There's no congruence with people with BPD because there's no self. And yes, they relate a lot seeking identity through you. But no, you cannot and will not succeed in trying to parent them. That's overgiving. That's caretaking. That's enabling. That's rescuing. That's trying to fix. And who wants to sign up to be with this most attractive female, most attractive male, whoever you're attracted to, but you don't know that they're borderline, then you want to sign up, you want to be their parent? That guarantees you what happens in these relationships. You will not get any of your needs met. Maybe some physical intimacy needs for a time, but you will otherwise not get any of your needs met. And you will constantly be trying to take care of their needs, and their needs are not satiable. Their needs are not meetable. 
their needs go way back and are very deep and entrenched in trauma and woundedness and what BPD really is, and you can't sue them and rarely can you ever calm them. And if you do calm them down, that doesn't last long. And and sometimes you might be trying to calm them down and they're like, how dare you? Like, what are you doing? Who do you think you are? I don't need... you know, Because they just don't. They have like zero, zero agreeableness. And that's just a fact of intergenerational trauma and how most people come to have BPD, which is not being a sociopath. It's not being a psychopath. It's not all these things that people are saying it is out there. But yes, I just wanted to clarify this and I'll say one more time. You cannot successfully parent a borderline, no matter if you're older and they're younger or they're, it doesn't matter any of that. What is happening for them unconsciously, they don't know. And then they have all this other behavior that's defensive, that, that's coming from a false self. And they don't see you and they don't hear you. And they just need, need, need. But it's a bottomless pit of need. And they confuse their needs with their wants. And they don't know what they want. And they don't know what they need. And even if you meet a need on a given day, they're still likely going to get pissed at you. Because then they get engulfment anxiety. So it's either they're fearing abandonment and they're clingy and whatever. And it's not about you. Or you're trying to be nice. They're going to punish you now because now they feel like you're just trying to control them. These relationships are impossible. And when I'm talking about object other parent representation, these are the reasons also other big red flags why you should not be staying in any relationship once you identify the BPD patterns or once they tell you, like I've had so many clients say, she even told me in the beginning that she had BPD, but I didn't know what it meant. So like, whatever. And that's what happens until it comes to be so painful, you just don't know how to breathe. You're trying and trying and trying, but you don't realize maybe what's happening to you and that the increase in your pain exponentially ongoing, oh, little bit of intermittent reinforcement, exponential increasing pain ongoing. You're giving, 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 and they're taking, taking, taking because they're using you. And I'm not saying consciously all the time. They're just using you. And that parent object other representation is not something that makes anything better about relationships. It just continues to fuel why people with BPD untreated cannot do relationships. No self, no congruence, no consistency, not emotionally adulted at all. I hope that clears that up and I hope it's helpful. And if you're still in denial, hey, I'm out here to work with anybody that resonates with me reach out. Let's talk about it. Let's see if we can't help you move out of denial and understand what's been going on. And the thing that people have to understand is you never really were who you seen for who you are. And you can never really be who the borderline quote experienced or saw you as because even in idealization, it wasn't about you for the borderline.